He attempts to get me into a Kimura. I deny it. I enter this heel hook. Ah, there's not enough time. I drain him. He tries to escape. I deny it. That would have been GG's, bro. of Brazil to global superstar status. Enter the former UFC lightweight champion and the most decorated finisher in UFC history. One of your favorites, Charles Duplox Oliver. Travi and John, you saw the smile just come across my face when you start to talk about it. This guy's fun. Very few guys bring out that emotion. Justin Gaethje and Charlie Allen. Those are the ones for yeah. me that feel like they bring that emotion out of me. Like, I know this will be fun. To see this guy rise from where he was, not only in his career, but in his life to become the champion of the world, it was amazing to watch. And for the time that he was the champ, what a ride, man. We had fun calling Oliveira fights. Let's see if he can start another run towards the championship. Yeah, big challenge for him here tonight, but I do get emotional thinking about where he came from and where he is right now, right? Nicknamed Duke Rocks the Ghetto, and he emerged out of it to change his life forever. We'll see how it goes for Charles Oliveira tonight. UFC lightweight champion Rafael Dos Anjos now applying his trade as a welterweight in DC. You have said his performance against Anthony Showtime Pettis to win the belt. One of the best performances as underdog challenger we have ever seen. It was unbelievable to watch. He went in there with an idea how he was going to become UFC champ and he stuck to it to a core. The game plan that him and Rafael Cordero had prepared was truly great for Anthony Pettis. Not only did he do that against Pettis, but he defended the belt against Donald Cerrone. Did it against Neil Magny after going up to welterweight. Beat Robbie Lawler. He's a cardio machine, and it was on full display in his last victory over Kevin Lee. And his alignment with Jason Carrillo has certainly helped take yeah. his boxing to the next level. Good to see Rafael Dos Anjos back. I'm looking for more here tonight. Tale of the tape for this lightweight championship fight. All righty, what is up? What is up? This is day three of me posting EA Sports UFC 5 gameplay. You guys have been amazing. The feedback has been incredible. Keep it coming. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, once again, thanks to EA for allowing me to actually upload this thing days before the game, uh, before the game drops. So really, really appreciate that. Um, in this match, I'm facing Romero again. Um, I'm using Charles Oliveira. He's using uh, Rafael Dos Anjos. Really, really good matchup. It was a fun fight. There was some very good striking, very good grappling, some very interesting submission exchanges you guys are going to see. Um, and for the most part in this fight, I was just trying to be very careful. Um, Charles Oliveira's health stats, they're not bad at all, but it's like you, st you still got to be very careful. Um, of course, he has the ability in real life to where the man gets dropped. He gets dropped so many times in every single fight. And he does a very good job of uh, surviving and ending up stopping the opponents. I mean, it's become sort of a legend with, uh, with Charles Oliveira and his ability to, to recover. Um, of course, there is the fact that his opponents are kind of afraid of him. They're afraid of his, his jujitsu, so they don't really follow him down. As you see right there, I'm catching the kicks from Romero, and what I'm trying to do is I'm pausing a little bit to see if I can throw him off and then trying to get him down. Just trying multiple different things because as it stands right now, taking down very good players in the center in the game right now, it's, it's a little bit too difficult, and it, it's something that we're really, really trying to have them um, amend. It's just too, too easy to deny takedowns, regardless of the... The level of the takedown artist in the game it's like if you know what you're doing on the feet in the center it's just it's almost impossible to actually get people down you got to start using like cage takedowns to start chaining multiple attempts and even then it's still it can still be very difficult so we're just trying to open things up a little bit um, but yeah talking about Charles Oliveira of course when you take a look at his perks um, he's got stuff like uh, 
uh, wake up call, for example, which allows you to recover from stuns and knockdowns a lot, a lot quicker. Um, his workhorse allows you to use less stamina when you're grappling on the ground. As Romero shoots right there, bails, shucks to the back, tries to take me down, but I'm able to deny it. He's doing a good job of working the body as well. Um, look at that beautiful pivot lunge. He is the only player, the only player in this game that I see consistently hitting pivot lunges. Like no one else does it. And it's not that it's so difficult to do, but man, it requires quite a bit of skill to actually hit those pivot lunges properly. And uh, it's it's always beautiful when when he does it, and it just, just it looks really, really good. It's something that I'm going to really try to see if I can hone in on because, man, you can create some beautiful angles with it when you pivot lunge, right? Uh, you cut an angle and start tee off to the body, to the head. A lot of options. Right there, he, he throws that beautiful front front legs, front leg uh, front kick to the body, into the into the leg kick. The way they were just staring at each other on, as they were backing out right there was really nice. But yeah, man. Charles Oliveira feels amazing, bro. He really does. Uh, punch speed of 94, punch power of 95. He's a powerful man. Um, it's when you start entering, you know, your bottom, your submission, I mean, your, your bottom control of 94, top control of 95, and then his submission offense of 99. Woo! <laughs> Let me tell you, man. If you know what you're doing with Charles Oliveira, it's a beautiful time. There we go. Landing some clean shots right there. He's starting to pressure a little bit. He lands the left hook. He shoots. Tries to take me down. I deny it. I'm going to get into single under. Muscle him to the cage. Shuck by. Get his back. And I'm going to drag him back. Now, right here, I wish the camera would stop doing it. This is one of the most annoying things of this about this game for me so far. When the camera is just all over the fucking place. And we've talked to them, we've talked to them about it. And hopefully... It's something that we get a fix for. Right there, I enter Umbar. He tries to escape. Actually, I think he was just faking the escape to try to get me to deny it so he can waste my stamina. But I'm, I'm denying it. I'm holding him right there. He starts to struggle. I notice it. I transition back to Baxedin. From Baxedin, he uh, recovers into full guard. That was, a, that was actually a very high-level exchange right there. Um, that, that struggle mechanic is going to save you a lot. Uh, because if you start to struggle, remember, the struggle mechanic drains you and your opponent at the same time. And if your opponent does not do anything and you get their stamina, the short-term stamina to zero, you get a free escape. Same thing if you're the guy that's trying to submit the opponent. Right there, he throws uh, a, a big shot. I'm able to flip him directly into mount. Um, try to enter another submission. I'm not able to. I deny that. And I believe from here, I go into a triangle choke. Now, from this triangle, this exchange was a long one. It's, it, and it makes a lot of sense realistically, too, because the triangle is a really good camp in position. He's trying to escape. I'm holding him right here. I'm denying a little bit. We're struggling a little bit. I try to hit him. He tries to go again. I notice his stamina is lower than mine, so I begin to struggle. I'm struggling. He goes again. I deny it. I keep struggling to drain his stamina completely. I wait a second because I know he's going to try to escape. I deny the escape, and then I go for the triangle choke. He tries to race it, but right there, it's a little bit too late, and I get this beautiful triangle on bar, which damages his bar significantly. If I had more stamina, it would have damaged his bar even more. So he actually saved himself significantly right there. Uh, roll him back into mount, deny this. I go to an arm triangle, but he's denied. That was a very good deny for the arm triangle right there. Like, you got to be very... Like, if your submission bar gets messed up, you really got to deny whatever submission attempts are coming after that. You got to be so diligent because, man, with the way it looks right now, all I would have needed was one more. One more, and I would have probably got him out of there. I go to hit him. He's able to uh, get that Kimura trap, flips me over, attempts to enter arm, arm triangle. I deny it and reverse the position, and round two is over. Really, really uh, good grappling exchanges right there. I thought that was fun. But uh, what I was saying in regards to the seamless submissions and the struggle and all that, if your opponent is not moving and you begin to struggle and you drain their short-term stamina all the way 
all, all the way low to uh, to zero, it gives you a free escape. All right, so they got to do something. And typically, the high level thing to do right now is the moment you notice that they are struggling with you, you can either attempt to lock in the submission and see the deny it, or you can just try to improve position. That's typically what I do. But if the opponent starts to catch on to it, I'll switch things up and just go for a submission to lock it in and see if they deny it. With the head kick, he shoots. I look to counter, he denies it. Very, very smart. Tries to freaking perform a high crotch right there. I deny it. And uh, I'm noticing his stamina is, uh, is, is lower than mine. This is something that happens when you survive a deep choke. Keep that in mind. If you survive a deep choke, it definitely affects your stamina. So the triangle is a very good one to use. Um, if you want to affect your opponent's stamina, get them into a deep choke triangle, um, arm triangles, guillotines, and uh, it definitely affects them. All right, so it looks like some bruising on that thigh right now. He hasn't really done anything to address that weapon. From right there, he's starting to switch his strategy a little bit right here by attacking my legs, which is very smart. He definitely has the advantage on the feet, but he shoots again. Shucks by, gets my back, gets this beautiful takedown right here. I roll, I try to go into full guard. He improves position and rather than ending up in full guard, he ends up in half guard, but I still get him the full guard. I don't mind being in full guard whatsoever when I'm using Charles Oliveira. Again, because of just how dangerous this man is right now with, this, with the new submission system. Like, if you don't know what you exactly, that's what, that, that is exactly what you do. Romero was being very smart right there. The moment he postured up, he got up. And that is, it's a big win. Like, you guys don't understand how much that changes the ground game. It changes the ground game significantly. The fact that the guard position is finally as dangerous as it's supposed to be. Of course, the fighter you're, the, the, you know, the, the player you're going against will have to be sufficiently sufficiently dangerous with his submissions for you to respect it. But, man, if you don't respect it and you get put in this... Submission, triangle, armbar, guillotine, and you don't know what you're doing, that can lose you the whole entire fight. So, you gotta be careful with, with, with being in somebody's guard now, man. You gotta be absolutely careful. Right there, his cheek is cut. Pause. <laughs> um, and you can see the uh, the eye icon right there show up. Like I said, it shows up when you get cut in areas of the face where bleeding is very easy, right? Where you bleed a lot, like your cheek, your eyebrows, your forehead. And now, every time I hit him on that side, it's actually going to do more damage. But he's doing a very good job of starting to pressure right now. He can feel like, he can feel the fight is kind of slipping away, so he's... He's starting to increase the pressure, and I am starting to shoot on him. Like, I'm, I'm trying to crash in a little bit and just take away that pressure a little bit as round number three comes to an end. Cross, left hook, that's where the cut happened, right there. That left hook opened him up. I wonder if, they, if, I, if we'll be able to see it in the replay. If they show a different angle, we'll be able to see that cut open up in real time. Look at this, watch it, watch it, watch it. Boom! The cut is opened up in real time right there. Right on the cheek. I love how the replay actually shows that now. Like if you get a good angle, you can actually see the cut open up in real time. It's beautiful. And uh, of course, when you open up a cut, whether it's on, the, on, on your opponent's nose, forehead, cheek, you definitely want to try to attack that area over and over again because again, it you improve how much damage you do to them on that side and you also make it so, you know, there's a better chance for the doctor to enter the, the ring and try to stop the fight. Also be very careful moving forward with the low singles. There is a very interesting counter to the low singles that they've added to the game as I set him down right there with a, with a hook. I attempt to enter into a heel hook, but he does a very good job of denying it. Next time, I'll probably look to deny that get up, that push off, and then try to enter, try to enter the heel hook. 
Tries to push me against the cage. He shoots. Gets it. Now this is him actually holding down on, the, on his left stick to get that takedown. I try to jailbreak. He denies it very well. I jailbreak again. He denies that as well. He's trying to damage my head inside control. I'm like, nah. I move and go to sprawl. Great job landing from the top position. He does everything right here. So well. I attempt to get up. Ill-advised. He tries to go behind. I decide to just pull guard. This is a very good uh, strategy to use right now, especially when you're using someone like Charles. The way I, what I do now is just try to think about how I would actually approach this in a real life scenario if I was like rolling with somebody in the gym or something. Always better to just pull guard, get the opponent back in front of you. Even if you're on your back, it's it's better if they're in front of you as opposed to be behind you. Right there, he gets up again. Like I said, it, it brings me so much pleasure watching Romero run away from the guard. <laughs> it is a nice feeling. I'm like, yes, yes. Run, sir, run. And uh, trust me, I will be doing the same goddamn thing. As I put him on his back right there. I would be doing the same damn thing. It is not a good... Unless you have a heel hook from close guard top. It's just a terrible place to be against somebody that knows what they're doing. You are at a major disadvantage. I get him into mount right there. Let's see what he does right here. I wonder if he went up. Let's see. I try to go for the arm triangle, well denied. He is really, really camping on it right now. Like, he doesn't want me to get into another submission at all, which is very smart. He attempts to get me into a Kimura. I deny it. I enter this heel hook. Ah, there's not enough time. I drain him. He tries to escape. I deny it. That would have been GG's, bro. But, uh... Not enough time. I do love my heel hooks, man. I love my leg locks in this game. Not enough time on that one. Yeah, that head kick he threw. And that one busted him open on the, on the left side, too. You see the cut open up. Watch this. No cut right there. Watch the cut. Boom! Right there, face is nice and opened up. He's bleeding right there. It's I love I love watching that. No cut. You hit him and boom, you see it right away. The blood hits the canvas. Nice. We haven't really opened. We haven't opened ourselves up like a lot here, so the canvas is not nice and bloody just yet. But this is round number five. Round number five right here. You know, you can see Romero is getting very serious. And right there, I'm like trying to like slip. And I'm just trying to be, just trying to be smarter. Usually, I'm so focused on, you know, damage and finishing the fight that I, I got to try to be smarter. Right there, he rocks me though. Throws the hook, hook into the uppercut. I try to take him down. He denies it. Now, he's trying to be more aggressive to try to use striking to maybe get me out of there and i'm just like okay i need to just respect i need to respect him right now respect this backing up a little bit just looking for an opportunity to maybe see if i can drag him back down if i could do that something might open up he cuts me you see that you see the, the the icon open up right there that tells me that my nose is busted he drops me so clearly he's winning this round right now clearly winning the round and as i'm watching this back i don't i don't know why i wasn't framing with the hooks like he clearly prefers to throw the hooks i should be framing and if i would have framed right there because of how many consecutive hooks he had already thrown i would have probably rolled him Postures up and gets out. This is something that, that I've talked to him about that I really don't like how that get up is free just because you've postured up. It's not really realistic and I'm hoping that they do something about it. Um, even if the opponent postures up, it's still close guard. Just because you postured up doesn't mean that you get to just back out and, and, and just get out of close guard. So it's a change I'm looking to see if they can, you know, if they can implement. Um, when you posture up, the legs are still closed. You got to do something to open the guard before you can then get up. Because in real life, just posturing up, like I said, doesn't just get you away from closed guard. That's not the way it works. 
That is when you start to so. watch the fighter to see what type of effect it starts to take on Right there. I believe he drops me one more time before the end of this round. Go for a head kick. You can see like a change in strategy, right? Like he knows right now that the path to victory at the moment is going to have to be to try to knock me dead on the feet. And I'm pretty sure he was keeping track of like the scorecards, which I need to try to do that a lot more, right? Keep track of who's winning, who's losing. He rocks me again. I wonder if he dropped me right here. Overhand. Overhand again, probably he threw. I'm ducking it. I'm trying to like not get knocked down again, but I think he knocks right there. He knocks me down a, another time. Tries to finish. I think he made a mistake right there and threw an illegal shot. And the fight is over. That was a good match, man. That was a very good fight. Very good fight. Really, yeah, I remember this matchup. It was fun. Like, I kind of beat myself up a little bit in some of those... Uh, just not being able to enter the submission system sooner. Like the that that heel hook, man, I was fucking thirsty for that heel hook. It was like, man, let me get it, let me get it. But the round was already over and uh I couldn't lock it in. Look at that. Boom. These nice, really, really good replays. Let's listen and see who won this one. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest. 48-47. Declare the winner by unanimous decision, Charles. There we go. So I am able to take this one by unanimous decision, Charles Oliveira. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, also, let me know if you guys want to see something against the AI. Because that's probably what I might do next to show you guys something against the AI. But um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, as always, leave a like. It always helps out the channel. And I'll see you guys later with a brand new one. As always, stay safe, boys. Peace out. Have a good one.